What is piercing? How it manifested itself in different cultures and epochs? What is its impact on our physical and spiritual bodies? In nowadays societies, piercing has become, as it were, a habit attributed to the younger generation and no longer carries any symbolism, but only a spirit of opposition and the desire to stand out from the crowd, which in reality turns into a senseless conformity. Another reason for wearing rings, stones, and any other shiny tinsel in the ears, nose, or body is a tribute to the fashion that is formed and completely directed by certain structures that control the consciousness of people. From the point of view of health sciences, acupuncture and Ayurveda, there are many important energy points in the human body, including 108 deadly ones, in which prana is concentrated. Stimulating these points, we can get a certain positive effect on the body, but prolonged wearing of the object at such points leads to constant irritation of one or more organs, which gradually become ill. From the energy standpoint, any damage to the human body leads to a disruption of the integrity of the spiritual bodies and prevents the proper harmonious flow of energy through the body, and as a consequence, this disruption negatively affects the internal organs. Just to name a few examples, in the case of eyebrow piercing, vision is impaired, earlobes interact with the kidneys, and with navel piercings, the function of the intestine and pancreas are also impaired. The blocking of channels by foreign objects leads to the interruption of free energy flow. When the navel is pierced, excess accumulates in the lower centers, chakras, and leads to illnesses. Additionally, disrupting the work of chakras will inevitably lead those who are pierced or tattooed to concentrate only on the lower and basic needs of survival, food, sex, pleasure. If you think this sounds like fun, continue reading. Due to blocked channels and interrupted energy flow, their life energy will not rise to higher centers, but linger in the lower three, thus leading to a halt in their spiritual development and degradation. The navel is our physical and energy center, the door into the subtle body of man, the place of balance of the whole organism, the place of power in all its manifestations. 84 energy channels are located there, and the connection of the person with their mother, and through her, with ancestors. Piercing the navel cuts off all these channels, severing ancestral roots, and quickly makes the person an easily controlled, soulless creature, incapable of progression. Navel piercing was an attribute of women in harems, whose most powerful protective energy channels were severed for good and whose existence would terminate forever at death. The recent mass appeal for such fashionable attributes of a stylish life, as body piercings and tattoos, causes one to wonder, who promotes all this nonsense, and for what purpose? Note, piercing and tattoos are insidious and powerful weapons of genocide, aimed primarily at young people, and undermining their genetic base at spiritual levels. Piercing is introduced in order to break the last barrier of the mind, and to facilitate the insertion under the skin of radiofrequency microchips, that store biometric data of a person in their memory. Inserted microchip turns people into a network node, which at any time can be simply, remotely turned off. The word piercing means puncture, and the custom itself is rooted in antiquity. In different cultures, people subjected their bodies to modifications in order to belong to a particular tribe, cult, a marker of status or of hierarchical difference.
In the Indian Vedas, it is said that an earring on the side of the nose symbolizes the veneration of the goddess Lakshmi, and since from the perspective of Ayurveda, the nostrils have a connection with the reproductive system of the woman, in India there are still decorations in the nose that are worn during a period of a girl's puberty or before marriage. A woman's nose should be decorated on the left side in a curl. This allows you to connect the mind and body, gives the woman peace of mind, and reduces lust and greed. In the Middle East, as well as with many indigenous tribes of Africa, America, and New Guinea, piercing the nasal septum, and wearing large bone jewelry, as symbols of masculinity and courage, were widespread. To this day, tribal peoples living apart from modern society have preserved the traditions of piercing and stretching of tunnels with the help of huge rings or plates reaching 15 centimeters in diameter, and deforming the nose, ears, and jaws. Tongue piercing, for which the spines of poisonous plants were used, was practiced for ritual purposes to achieve a changed, altered, state of consciousness and worship of the gods. Ancient cultures used all kinds of amulets and talismans to connect with nature and communicate with spirits, and some of these ornaments were always with a man on his body, which protected him from dark forces. At the time of the birth of Christianity in Europe and the Middle East, rings in the ears, lips, nose, foot and hand bracelets, and cervical rings were a sign of slavery, or of belonging to the lowest social class. Slaves, Gentiles, and heretics simply had to wear such insignia. Later, by order of the church in 1139, it was forbidden to pierce the nose, ears, and other places to insert iron rings or hang bells. The Bible says that the cuts and tattoos on the body are the same as the inscriptions on the wall of a temple. They do not decorate but desecrate both, the temple and God, who dwells within. Since any self-initiated bodily changes contradict the concept of a perfect body and God's image and likeness, they all belong to occult manifestations and were under strict prohibition until recently, concerning humans, it is said that God created the human body perfect, and the devil makes us decorate it, to try and correct what God has created. With the advent of modern religions, the attitude towards piercing has undergone many changes under the influence of so-called sacred texts. Now that man has truly become the servant of God, he is no longer forbidden to desecrate the temple of God in which the Holy Spirit dwells. The habit of getting used to tattoos and piercings, is formed from kindergarten, with complete ignorance and connivance of parents, by using seemingly innocuous washable stickers and painting children's faces. Take charge of your health, both physical and mental. Consider any complementary health approaches you may use. Educate yourself so you can make well-informed decisions. You will find incredible wealth of information in books written by Nikolai Lavashov, Russian scientist, who lived in California for 15 years from 1991 through 2006, and where he wrote the final appeal to mankind. As usual, to scare away seekers of truth, Wikipedia deceits its readers by presenting falsely accusations in occultism. Furthermore, to hide the knowledge even further, one of his books is classified as anti-Semitic and extreme, and banned in Russia. You will learn the name of that book on the next slide. In his book Russian History Viewed Through Distorted Mirrors, Nikolai Lavashov explains in a very detailed and lucid manner who has orchestrated all of this takeover of humanity. His books are written in a language that everyone is able to understand even with no formal education. Nonetheless, new knowledge is not easily attained. 
people are not accustomed to thinking with multi-dimensional blocks of information, or to leaving behind old dogmas and stereotypes. It is difficult to rethink once unshakable truths. Exercise your right to know the truth.